It was game four of the 2008 NLCS, with the score tied at five runs apiece in the top of the eighth inning. The 40-year-old Matt Stairs strolled to the plate. He was pinch hitting for Phillies reliever Ryan Madsen. There were two outs in the inning, and Dodgers manager Joe Torre called for his star reliever, Jonathan Broxton. Stairs worked a 3-1 count. Broxton responded with a 95-mile-an-hour fastball. Stairs took a mighty swing and crushed the ball deep to right field. Stairs' monster shot gave the Phillies a critical two-run lead at a pivotal point in the NLCS. The Phillies had been up two games to one, but they were in Los Angeles. The Phillies started the eighth inning two runs down and were staring the prospects of playing Game 5 in LA with the series tied at two games apiece. But the Matt Stairs home run was the moment that broke the Dodgers' back. It set up a superb pitching performance by Cole Hamels, which would clinch the NL pennant. And while most Philly fans proudly recall Matt Stairs' blast, how many can remember who was on base? It was Philly's catcher, Carlos Ruiz. Now, Carlos Ruiz may not have been the best catcher in Philadelphia history, but he was a solid player who came through whenever the Phillies needed him to. His tenacious play made him a fan favorite, and they would call his nickname Chooch whenever he came to the plate. This is his story. Welcome to Philadelphia Baseball History. Don't forget to check out our merchandise. T-shirts, phone cases, masks, notebooks, mugs, and much more. Just go to tpublic.com and look for Philadelphia baseball history. In the 2008 NLCS, Ruiz came through for the Phillies at a time when their big, superstar former MVP first baseman, Ryan Howard, was struggling. Howard went hitless in the first two games of the NLCS, and by contrast, Ruiz went two for three in game one and two for four in game two. In fact, in game two, Ruiz was a key player in both of the Phillies' four run innings. Ruiz's RBI double in the bottom of the second inning got the scoring started for the Phils, knocking in third baseman Greg Dobbs. He started a two-out rally and scored when pitcher Brett Myers immediately followed him with an RBI single to center field. In the bottom of the third, Ruiz scored on Shane Victorino's two-out bases-clearing triple. And with eight runs in their back pockets, the Phillies were in the driver's seat that take a 2-0 lead in the series. Now in the critical eighth inning of game four, Chooch extended the inning, getting a two-out single and setting the stage for Stair's impressive home run. Ruiz ended that series batting 313 with a home run and three runs. Ruiz would go on to hit 375 in the World Series with a home run, three RBIs, and two runs scored. Yet, for the regular season, Ruiz batted 219. But Chuch had a knack for coming through offensively in the playoffs when the Phillies' big guns were silent. In the 2009 World Series with Victorino, Stairs, and Howard all hitting below the Mendoza line, and Jimmy Rollins batting a mere 217, Ruiz hit 333 with a home run and two RBIs while batting either eighth or ninth in the order. In the third inning of the critical game six, Ruiz hit a historic triple. Chuch was the first catcher to hit a triple in the World Series since Jason Veritek did it in 2004. He was also the first nine-hole hitter to do it since Chris Gomez of the Padres back in 1998. 
and Ruiz was immediately knocked in with a Jimmy Rollins sacrifice fly. Born in Panama in 1979, Chooch was a clutch hitter and a smart game caller. He had an accurate arm and could easily catch a base runner napping. The Phillies signed Ruiz as an amateur free agent in December of 1998. He was 19. And while attending the Phillies Baseball Academy in the Dominican Republic, he switched from his original position, which was second base, to catcher. After a season in the Dominican Summer League, where he batted 305 and had four home runs, he came to the United States in 2000. Chooch slowly climbed the ranks of the Phillies farm system, spending seven years in the minors before breaking into the big leagues. In his last two years with the Scranton Wilkesbury Red Barons, the Phillies AAA affiliate at the time, Ruiz hit 300 and 307 respectively. He was finally called up at age 27 in the 2006 season. Shuttling between Philadelphia and Scranton Wilkesbury most of the season, as Michael Lieberthal spent time on the disabled list. When Lieberthal left Philadelphia as a free agent in the offseason, Ruiz became the Phillies' everyday catcher. And it was in the minor league that Ruiz earned his nickname, Chooch. Like many Panamanians, Carlos had a habit of muttering the word chucha whenever he was frustrated, much like Americans would use the F word. His teammate and roommate, Anderson Machado, was amused with Ruiz's habit and started calling him Chucha whenever he called to him. Soon, he shortened it to just Chooch. Now, as it turns out, uh, Chucha is a Panamanian curse word, roughly equivalent to the F word in English, but literally a reference to female genitalia. Fascinatingly, Ruiz would proudly wear his nickname emblazoned on his catcher's gear. Philadelphia fans, mostly unaware of the word's origins, loudly greeted Ruiz with the chant of a Panamanian swear word whenever he came to the plate. And Chooch was initially embarrassed by it, hoping that the nickname would not be overheard by any nearby Panamanian. But Ruiz had a good sense of humor. He would often do impressions of his teammates at their request, imitating their mannerisms. Sometimes he'd imitate manager Charlie Manuel's southern draw, but with Carlos's Panamanian accent. Ruiz continued to be a solid catcher for the Phillies well into his 30s. He reached 300 twice, the first time in 2010 at age 31. That's when he hit 302 for the season. In 2012, which was his only All-Star appearance, Chooch hit 325, and that was his best average. In fact, in 2012, Chooch hit his career best 16 home runs, as well as his career best 68 RBIs and 56 runs scored. Perhaps the greatest sign of Ruiz's prowess as a big league catcher was the fact that he was the game caller for not one, not two, not three, but four no-hitters. In fact, Carlos Ruiz is tied with Jason Veritek for catching the most major league no-hitters. And Ruiz did two things that Veritek did not. Ruiz caught a perfect game and a postseason no-hitter, both in the same year and with the same pitcher. The first no-hitter took place on May 29, 2010. Roy Halladay, a former Cy Young Award winner from the American League, joined the Phillies through a trade in the offseason with the Blue Jays. Two months into the 2010 season, and the trade paid off. Halliday tossed a perfect game, only the second perfect game in Phillies history and the 20th in Major League history. Ruiz's second no-hitter was no less historic. This was Ruiz's fourth postseason. But for the 11-year veteran Roy Halliday, 
it was his first playoff game. Halliday showed no playoff jitters. He gave up only a fifth inning walk to Reds outfielder Jay Bruce. Ruiz's third no-hitter came four seasons later, and it was also under unique circumstances. It was Labor Day, September 1st, and the Phillies were playing the Braves in Atlanta. The Braves had started the game six games behind Washington for the division lead, while the Phillies, well, they were in dead last. The starting pitcher was Cole Hamels. He went six innings and walked five batters. In fact, twice, multiple walks had caused Hamels to pitch out of trouble. That was in the first and the third innings. Hamels reached 108 pitches by the end of the sixth inning, and he was yanked for reliever Jake Diekman. It was a decision that Hamels claimed he was okay with. Diekman then retired the Braves in order in the seventh inning. Ken Giles took over the mound in the eighth inning, and he proceeded to strike out the side. And then, in the ninth inning, Philly star reliever Jonathan Papelbon came in. He completed the no-hitter by retiring the Braves in order. It was the first combined no-hitter in Philly's history. And then one season later, with Ruiz catching again, Cole Hamels would repeat his performance pitching against the Cubs' Jake Arrieta, who was the eventual Cy Young Award winner that season. In fact, the Cubs were the eventual World Series winner. Now, it was almost a certainty that this was going to be Cole Hamill's last game in a Phillies uniform. It was July 25th and the trade deadline was less than a week away. And the Phillies, well, they were on the verge of their fourth consecutive season of failing to reach the playoffs. They were just coming to grips with realizing that they had to be in a rebuilding process. They had to restock the farm system, which had been long neglected. And their solid left-handed starting pitcher was the best trading chip that the Phillies had. So he was most certainly going to be used to generate the needed prospects for the minor leagues. And it was as if Hamels wanted to say goodbye to his loyal following before he left Philadelphia, so he did it in dramatic fashion. Hamill struck out 13 Cubs batters and walked only two. He broke the Cubs' streak of going 50 years without being no-hit. In fact, he posted the first no-hitter at Wrigley Field in 43 years. Carlos himself became part of the rebuilding process. In the following season, the Phillies traded him to the Dodgers, receiving minor league prospect Joey Carletta as a player to be named later. Carletta never made it to the big leagues. But Ruiz was reunited with his former teammate Chase Utley and made it to the postseason again, batting 500 in the Dodgers' NLDS with Washington. In the offseason, he was traded to Seattle, and it was his final year of his 12-year career. His career batting average was 264, just shy of Hall of Fame catcher Johnny Bench's career average of 267. Carlos played 11 seasons for the Phils, earning a warm spot in the hearts of Philadelphia fans. His departure was greeted with sadness, but a resigned understanding that the Phillies needed to take such drastic measures in order to address the depleted minor league system. Carlos Ruiz is in good company, joining the ranks of solid catchers who played with the Phillies over a long stretch of seasons. Watch out for our next video where we look at the no hitter by Terry Mahalik. And if you like pitching performances, check out this video about the first Phillies pitching superstar or check out this playlist on Phillies Pitchers. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.